Hello and welcome back to the Customer Architecture and Engineering YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk around the recent multi-tenant guidance that we have published uh, to Azure Landing Zones. So without further ado, let's jump into today's content. So as you can see, we have published uh, a number of new articles into the Cloud Adoption Framework uh, underneath the Azure Landing Zones banner. Um, and this is all to do with helping customers understand what to do when they're deciding between single or multiple Azure Active Directory tenants for their requirements. And also then when they do decide that multi-tenant might be the right decision for them, how do we help those customers operate Azure Landing Zones across those multiple tenants? So the short link is here. So aka.ms slash ALZ slash multi-tenant, uh, and that will get you to the landing page uh, for the new content. Um, but you'll find it in the existing Azure Landing Zones content just beneath the Azure uh, Billing and Active Directory tenant design area. So in today's video, I'm going to cover a few of the, the key topics to take away from this to help you digest the content, but I fully suggest going to have a read of that content to give you uh, the best insights and obviously the make the most informed decision for your organization. So the first topic that we really should consider and key topic from uh, the guidance that we have published is what scenarios do we suggest that a multiple tenant setup is actually suitable for? Now to answer that, um, we've actually got a dedicated page within the content for scenarios where we believe that multiple Azure Active Directory tenants are required. Um, and as you can see, there's a number of them here. There's about six or seven um, common ones that you would expect to see, you know, mergers and acquisitions, very common. You inherit tenants, so you can't do anything about them. But, you know, most organizations will try and consolidate them into a single one uh, over time. Um, regulatory compliance um, or country or region regulatory requirements that mean you have to have separate tenancies um, you know that is a very valid use case for them um, sometimes you have a very large organization and just being that large organization you might have splits within the organization that means you're actually different operating units different businesses um, and therefore you may have separate tenants um, Obviously, if you're an ISV or an independent software vendor and you're publishing and hosting applications or SaaS applications and delivering them to your clients, then hosting those uh, customer facing workloads in a separate tenant is absolutely recommended from us. Uh, so that is a very common scenario again. Um, and then we get into the tenant level testing, right? So you may require a separate tenant to test certain features of the Microsoft Cloud, such as Microsoft 365 services like Power Platform or maybe Dynamics or maybe Exchange or maybe Intune. You know, there are lots of reasons that you may want to test Azure Active Directory in a separate tenant for those Microsoft other Microsoft Cloud products. And our final scenario here is, you know, grassroots IT, shadow IT and startups. You know, this is very common where in those kind of organizations, especially startups, people will create Azure Active Directory tenants because they're unsure of what that actually means and what that, that entails. And you'll end up with lots of them. And then when you get to the stage of like, hey, which one are we going to use? You'll then have this decision to make. And generally, you'll find that it will be consolidating into one and only using one going forward. But having those multiple and having them created up has helped you get to that decision point in there. But, you know, shadow IT is also a real concern here and something that we do see in large organizations. So we've got documented um, discussion points and things to be aware of for each of these scenarios. So please do go and check out the link below um, and you will go and find more information of what we recommend and what to consider when you may find yourself in these scenarios and whether a single or multiple tenants is the right way forward for you. So what should you consider when you're making that decision? You know, you're, you're trying to decide between a single or multiple Azure Active Directory tenants. What, what things should we consider? Now, obviously our, our documentations, we have a whole page dedicated to considerations and recommendations that I highly advise you go and read, as well as all of this content, especially from the overview scenarios and our considerations and recommendations pages. Those three pages really break down the key terms and topics of you know, what, when should we consider this? What sh should we do if we do decide this? What should we do if we don't decide this? And from there, there is additional content to support you if you do decide to go multiple tenants. And if you don't, 
the existing content that already exists inside of Azure Landing Zones today is adequate and will support you on that onward journey. So when you're thinking about this decision versus single versus multi, um, you know, really ask yourself these questions, right? And I think these are key challenging points. So do you really need separate tenants? You know, you as an organization, do we really need separate tenants? Can't we do this all inside of a single tenant? You know, that, that should be an honest question. The, the best experience you're gonna have for collaborating um, with the Microsoft Cloud products is inside a single Azure Active Directory tenant. So really ask yourselves if it's really required to have another or additional tenants. Um, moving on from that, you know, like you should also be aware of the fact that not all Azure services play nicely in multiple tenant scenarios. Uh, so things like B2B or business to business collaboration. You know, if you take something like Azure Virtual Desktop today, that does not work with B2B identities. Uh, and then, you know, underlying services that may be required there like Azure Files also don't support B2B out of the box. Now, some of these services add the support, support for these over time, but not all of them, right? So, but from day one, they will work within a single tenant scenario. So if you have that single tenant where all, everything is hosted and, and operated from, you're again having that best collaboration experience from a single tenant. So it's important to really understand, do you need a separate tenant for these things? And I think the final point here is a, a sort of high level and there are much more in the documentation at the link below. So please do go and check that out. But it's very, uh, it's a complicated topic and a complicated job to secure a single tenant, let alone secure multiples. So if you have one tenant and you have you know, a single security team and an identity team that are looking after that tenant and operating it, securing it, creating JML workflows around that for joiners, movers and leavers, and all of those things, if you add other tenants into that, that same team are gonna become stretched. And without the proper resourcing and additional headcount in those teams, there's a real risk that actually you can put, you know, all of the tenants at risk because you're securing them in a diluted fashion because you haven't got the same amount of resources to protect to the best of your abilities across all of those tenants. Unless you've really invested in your automation uh, lifecycle to be able to have multiple tenants and automate, you know, the securing of those at scale. But again, that requires some significant investment. So really do think about, you know, adding another tenant, like, yes, it may seem like a, actually a more secure thing to do, but actually it can will be completely the opposite and actually jeopardize the security of all of your tenants because you've now got more things to manage and operate. So actually having less and a tighter control over a single tenant is sometimes more advantageous for those security conscious customers. Now, you may have noticed from the tone of uh, this presentation that actually the recommendation uh, still very much is um, unchanged from Azure Landing Zone's perspective when you're operating uh, in Azure, that a single tenant is the best approach and recommended for most of our customers. Now, if you do meet one of the scenarios where you actually um, do require separate tenants, then that's absolutely fine. We're not saying don't do that. If you do have the correct justification and the right reasons to be going into a multi-tenant setup, then that's absolutely fine. If as long as you have thought about it and made those decisions following the scenario guidance and the other content that we have published, absolutely fine. But for the majority of our customers, the 80% of our customers, most of them will absolutely be perfectly happy inside of a single tenant and have the best experience for their entire organization, as well as having an easier job of securing, managing and operating that single tenant. And again, this is taken from the documentation. So you can go and see this, this call out in our docs that we've published uh, and obviously the, the links that are shared from there as well um, will also help you make that decision that a single tenant is likely the best solution for you uh, for the majority of our customers. But what happens if you, you haven't decided that, right? What happens if you have decided that actually, no, we do need multiple tenants, right? Like th there is a, a valid reason that we require multiple tenants. What do we do next? Well, from an Azure landing zone perspective, we, we've got you covered there as well, right? So with our latest content, we have published a number of uh, supporting articles that tell you how you can operate an Azure landing zones deployments across multiple tenants. Now, spoiler alert, you cannot deploy one Azure landing zones across multiple tenants. Um, you will need to deploy Azure landing zones multiple times 
in each of those tenants. So for any t each tenant that you have, you will need to deploy Azure landing zones at least once into that tenant, or maybe multiple times, depending on your requirements. Um, we have a lot of considerations and recommendations in our typical Azure landing zones format. So bullet pointed, do this, don't do this, very prescriptive guidance in our considerations and recommendations page. So please do go and check that one out. We then have a whole uh, article in that section of the, the table of contents dedicated to automation. So we've documented a couple of approaches that you can use to automate uh, your Azure landing zones deployment and management at scale across multiple tenants, should you have decided that is the right setup for you. So do go and check that out as well. Uh, we then also have got a dedicated section around Azure Lighthouse. Now, some of you may be aware that Azure Lighthouse is really useful in uh, multi-tenant scenarios and typically in the partner space where a partner is managing multiple customers and obviously needs to manage multiple customer tenants um, to you know perform operations help support them and do all of those kinds of things but actually it's not limited to customers and partners anybody can use your lighthouse um, and we would highly recommend that you think about using it if you are a multi-tenanted customer. And there are some really clever things that you can do and some of them which we have documented in terms of you know, how you can use Lighthouse to simplify your RBAC model across tenants and not have to worry about uh, B2B invites and stuff like that for some of the more platform level operations that you're likely to need to do. So please do go and check that out. And I think the final and most important piece of our guidance is stick to the tenant boundaries that you've decided upon. So if you have decided that you are going to be a multi-tenant customer and the reasons why you are going to be multi-tenant, then keep to those clear, defined, distinct boundaries that you have created so that you don't end up with use cases being mixed between the two tenants. Because as soon as you do that, you might as well have not have created multiple tenants. You might as well have done it all inside of one. Uh, as per the default recommendation from us in the Azure Landing Zones team for the majority of our customers. So really important, if you're creating multiple tenants, make sure you've got a really good business justification and clear technical you know, definition of this is when it goes in this tenant and this is when it goes in another tenant. And you follow that to the letter of the law so that you absolutely ensure there is no uh, cross pollution of workloads and use cases between tenants because as soon as you do that, you're at risk of actually of making the wrong decision to start with. And that's it. It's a really short, simple video today. Really do uh, recommend going to check out the, the content that we shared earlier. Um, lots of uh, great insights there and lots of um, useful anecdotes to take away. Um, obviously, we appreciate your feedback. So if you do spot anything, please feel free to raise uh, an issue uh, with the content, whether that's positive or negative, or whether it's something you'd like us to see add, added to that or like us to add to that content, then using the feedback on the pages absolutely is the best way to do that. So please do do that. Uh, another quick call out, you know, if you like what we do here in the customer architecture and engineering team uh, that create Azure landing zones, then you know, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and you know, let us know what other content you'd like to see. We'd be more than happy to create that. And as a final call out, if you are uh, doing a lot in the Azure landing zone space and you want to keep up to date with what we're up to, you know, you may have heard about our external community calls that we we do on a quarterly basis, um, but you might have always missed the invites and only catch the recordings. If you want to stay up to date and you want to get the latest and greatest from what's coming from the Azure Landing Zones team and be notified of these events and surveys that we're sending out and stuff like that, then please sign up to our new uh, mailing list that we've published there with the short link of uh, aka.ms slash ALZ slash notifications slash sign up um, or scan the QR code here and that will take you straight to that page and you can sign up there. And obviously, if you do want to opt out at any stage, you can use the link below as well. But with that, thank you very much and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.